welcome back to St. Mojo Homestead. We have had a lot going on this weekend already. Yeah. We um, processed our first round of meat chickens. That was super exciting. We had three homestead uh, channels here helping out and just getting their hands into it. We also had our neighbor come. I was really cold. It was 46 degrees. Wow, was it? It was. Oh. But we got them done and we are so excited. I'm so excited to now have 30 chickens that are gonna go in our freezer. 31. 31. Yeah, 31 because <laughs> we officially confirmed this morning that one of our younger egg layers was a rooster. Yep. Unfortunately for him, he tried crowing for the first time this morning. We were gonna keep him. We were, we were. But then Lisa and Charlie brought a funny haired rooster. I don't know. So they brought four roosters that they, just because they have a ton of roosters, yeah. um, that they were going to go ahead and just process. And Jesse from Willowbrook Homestead also brought three of his roosters that he was uh, processing. So Charlie was like, yeah, we're processing them unless somebody wants them. Well, Dom from Faith Family <laughs> Homestead was here. So I think they went home with two. Yeah, they went yeah. and they took two. And Cass told our girls that if they could catch <laughs> our young rooster, then they could have one of their roosters. Who so, doesn't want a crazy haired rooster? I did not know this in the moment until we were packing up and she's like, oh wait, we have to get our rooster. <laughs> Ayla loves it. And They've already named it, renamed it. Renamed. Yes. Don't His tell name Lisa. <laughs> is officially Pharaoh. Sorry, Lisa. He has had a name change and it's Pharaoh. That's awesome. Sayla <laughs> is not super opinionated about things on the homestead, but when she gets attached to something, a fancy rooster. Yeah, she gets attached to it. Yes. So. Yes. So that does kind of lead into what we wanted to do a video on today and yes. it's all about chickens yeah. if we're gonna put the time and the energy and the money yeah. into raising something growing something whether it be garden animals whatever we want to like maximize what we can get out of that product also want to kind of get into eggs and yeah. egg laying chickens because that's a hot topic now right um so yeah if you watch this and you have chickens then you're one of the fortunate ones but if you're watching this and you don't have chickens Maybe we can talk you into getting some egg layers. In might this video. be time. It might, might be, be time. time. But before we get started, I have to say I am so excited about this olive tree. Yes, I got it in the ground this weekend. Yes, I am very excited about it too. Yeah. <laughs> it's the next day. It's a rainy day. It is rainy. It is a very rainy day. It's a perfect rainy day for a little chat about yeah. chickens. Porch chat. <laughs> Front porch chicken chat. Front porch chicken chat. <laughs> What did you think of yesterday? So it was cold. It was which cold. made it hard. I liked it being cold though, because I mean, I didn't, but <laughs> I also didn't feel like I had to really rush. I kind of forgot how to like do it. So I needed Jesse and Charlie kind of to help refresh my memory. Yes. I didn't feel like the, the sun was beating down on these chickens, like cooking them. So I felt like I could take my time. Right. I didn't like being frigid and cold, but I was grateful that while I was learning, it wasn't super hot. I would recommend if you're learning or you're doing it for the first time, don't do it in the summer. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing, like honestly, yeah. I'm a little bit like, yeah, maybe nervous about. Right. Like when we do process in the summertime. For those of you who maybe haven't processed chickens before, Thank your farmer. Like this has like <laughs> really given me a new respect for those people that do go through the steps so that I can have food on my table. It's not that it's hard. It's just it's a lot it's a lot of work. It's a long pro longer than I thought it would be processing 30 chickens. And it still only took an hour and a half. <laughs> it felt like that. <laughs> so, let's talk yeah. about yeah all the ways that we're maximizing that because that's one reason why we do want to maximize it you know we had mentioned earlier that when we take the time to grow something right. raise it put money into it time into it we yeah. want to maximize every little piece right and so um right now we have chicken feet boiling in our kitchen the chicken feet are full of collagen um they are great for stock that was 
this is weird, but it's one of the things I was most excited about. Me too. With processing our yes. own chickens is we get to keep all of that. If you are interested in making stock from chicken feet, the first step of the process is wash them, obviously. Yes. I did really hot water with antibacterial soap and I kind of scrubbed them. I let them soak in there a good 15 minutes because you want to let all that stuff soften. And then I ran, I drained all that water and I ran hot water and just rinsed and scrubbed each foot really well. well I've heard it said that you skin them. Which is really just an extra precaution, I think, more than anything mm -hmm. to make sure you remove any debris or dirt that may be there. Right. I was very thorough in my washing. Went ahead and started the process of cooking them down and getting that stock. So and it's um, looking really good. Yeah. yeah. I'm really excited about using that in tonight's dinner. The other benefit of doing it is it offers up a lot of food. Yes. <laughs> Not for us. Yes. So the pigs get all of the scraps. Everything that's left over that we're not going to eat goes to the pigs. All of the dark organ meat, what we're doing is freeze drying it for dog treats. Now, you can eat them, but I'm not big on like chicken liver and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. I just, it's never been a taste that I've acquired and yeah. I've tried it several times, can't get yeah. into it. So like we're going to, there's a ton of nutrients in right. those organs. And so what we're doing is giving them, using them for dog treats yeah. because it's going to be a really nutrient dense uh, treat that we can give our dogs. Yeah. So the other way we used what we got from the processing was we used the blood. Um, you get a lot of blood when you process. You get a lot of blood when you process <laughs> and it all went into buckets. And then if you dilute that, you can actually put it in your garden, which will give, add some iron and a lot of good nutrients to your soil. This is a great fertilizer for your leafy greens. They really need that iron. They're a great source of iron if you are anemic. And so adding that to the soil will just enrich your garden even more. I added it yesterday knowing that we would have rain a week. Kind of got lucky with that, but yeah. um, that way any excess that was on the surface or didn't really get washed down in there or off the, that may have like accumulated on the leaves, I knew it was gonna get washed off today. So I didn't have to worry about like the residue sticking around. Cause that is one thing that you, especially if you've got uh, just animals in the area, they'll yeah. smell that blood and want to go after it. So would you recommend putting it in and then soaking, doing a good soaking the next day? Yeah, if it's not gonna rain, I would let it sit for like overnight or something and then irrigate your garden just yeah. to really kind of get it down in the soil and in the surface so that yeah. things aren't gonna take it away. One thing we did talk about doing was freeze drying it, which you can do, that's another option. And it basically turns, that's what blood meal is gonna be. Yeah. Um, turns it all the way down into powder and then you can just sprinkle that around your plants mm -hmm. and just let nature water it in or you water it in or whatever. Yeah. So we said all things chicken, so we're not just focusing on meat chicken. So let's talk hot topic right now. Oh my goodness. Eggs. Eggs. I'm gonna preface this by getting on a quick little soapbox here. If you follow us on TikTok, you've seen it. <laughs> if you caught our latest short that we put up on YouTube, you've seen it. Uh, what fired me up over this is that the CDC apparently is advising people to be cautious. They're not saying don't, but yeah. they're advising people to be extremely cautious if you're going to start a backyard flock because of all the disease risks, mainly salmonella, that chickens bring onto your property. Now, if you have chickens, you know that this is very skewed information um, and there is no reason to be afraid of it whatsoever. What I do want to say, though, is if you don't have chickens, it is a great time to start. Chickens yeah. are a really easy livestock animal yeah. um, and beneficial, especially with where the egg prices are right now. Now, I don't anticipate them staying high, but the benefit of it is you get a healthier product than what you're going to get in the right, grocery store. Right. Uh, but when eggs are pushing $10 for a dozen, which I saw the other day in a grocery store for organic crazy, eggs, crazy. then maybe it is time to start considering that. So the biggest thing in this is I just want to encourage you guys, if you're considering it, go ahead and do it. Just yeah, jump in. Yeah. Chickens are not a huge investment. And so if you start into it and you decide, yeah, this isn't for me, you're not really out a lot of money. No. And a lot of people that are interested in 
laying hens, if you get into it and you decide you aren't interested, you can easily sell them. Like that is something people will buy from you. So. Oh yeah, especially right now. Right there's now. a lot of people yeah. looking for laying hens, meaning hens that have already started laying. One thing that you, if you're looking into it, you need to know is a hen has to be, most breeds are gonna be six months old before they even mm -hmm. start laying eggs. Yeah. So it is like a six month investment, but for the next three years, um, you're gonna get egg production out of them. Right, and if you have land or uh, build a tractor or something and have some way for your chickens to forage, it greatly cuts down on your feed costs. We did really rough chicken math. And I will preface this by saying, we get our chicken feed in bulk for pretty cheap. Uh, I mean, considering what you could be paying for chicken feed. Uh, we get a 50 pound bag that's roughly $14, $15 and it will last us a good little while. Now I'm not going to get into like how many chickens we have and all that stuff because really all that matters is how many eggs you're getting. Right. Our chickens right now, so they, they cut back in the, in the winter time. They don't lay nearly as heavy, but we're averaging four to five eggs a day. Yeah. We are hitting about $3 per dozen eggs. That's what we're putting in right now. Now, if you go to like tractor supply and get non gmo food, you can still be paying right now at the winter rate that our hens are laying at about $4 a dozen, which is cheaper than anything you're gonna find in the grocery store, especially right. for the quality of egg that they're gonna be laying. But when prices are normal, you don't really save a lot of money. You have the benefit of food security. You know, you're yes. gonna have eggs. And you also have the benefit of knowing where your food comes from, of knowing it's a good quality egg that you are eating, that you're feeding your family. It looks better and it tastes better. My kids don't even really like eggs from a restaurant anymore because there They're flavorless. is, yeah, there is a distinct difference once you start eating farm raised eggs. If you haven't yet, take the plunge. Yeah. It is. It definitely worth it when we did our, again, very rough kind of chicken math on that. Now, there's been a lot of comments of people trying to find local eggs and complaining that farmers are jacking up the price. We're not taking into account the time that goes into like keeping a chicken coop clean, keeping chickens happy, all of that. And I'm just going to say my opinion here that you're gonna pay for a product. Farmers it's one thing to jack a price way up, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna sell our eggs for at cost, what they're costing right. us just in feed, because we have time in there. It's also, we're selling food that we could keep yeah. because we can preserve eggs. And yes. so, yeah, we're still gonna be selling them for five, six bucks a, a dozen. Uh, dozen. Yeah. Um, because again- So that, don't go out there yeah. and use this as ammunition to try to lowball anybody you may know that's selling them out of their backyard. They are doing, I feel like a community, a great service to do it because mm. they can right now beat grocery store prices and help people out in that way. If you're able to buy a five to $6 dozen of non-GMO or organic eggs, they're saving you a lot of money. So yeah. don't complain about that price. So that's all we have for you about chickens and eggs. It's time for highs and lows. Highs and lows. <laughs> He gets so weirdly excited about it. So let us know if you watch this segment. <laughs> um, it's going to take a lot of people saying no for me to cancel it out because I do enjoy it. But I would love to hear that. So yeah. make, leave, let us know in the comments if yeah. you like this high or low segment. You want me to go first? Sure. My high was yesterday, processing. Um, yeah. Not that processing is like a fun thing, but just to see like the amount of food that we got. These yeah. chickens they were huge. huge. We had other homesteaders <laughs> helping us and everyone. Who raised a different uh, breed and also the same breed. And they were like, your birds are big. Whatever you did, keep, <laughs> keep doing, doing it. it. I'm like, yeah. great. Okay, we'll them. just feed them. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm excited about it. We have not started weighing them yet because they are still kind of getting that rigor mortis out of them. So they're soaking right now. And then we'll package them uh, tomorrow. We'll weigh some of them to try to get kind of an average. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. But I don't know that I had a low. Um, I got that. It was kind of a down week for me. Uh, project kind of got put on hold. So I was just sort of like around the house. I mean, I did get to do still some work with the business. Um, but it was kind of a relaxing week. So I'm not sure that I really had a low. 
So my high was yesterday. I did have a lot of fun. Um, I was just really cold. <laughs> but it was fun hanging out with everyone. Knowing that we provided 30 plus mil meals for our family. You yeah. know? I mean, because that's just, that's always exciting. Yes. Knowing that we raised something and now we have food. Oh, my other high was the olive tree. Oh, yeah. We got an olive tree. Which I grew up watching my grandpa cure olives, so it's like nostalgic for me. So I'm excited about that. And my low, I don't have a low. We had a good week. Hey, it was a good week. It was. <laughs> Hope you guys had just as good of a week. Uh, thank you for joining us today in this rainy day front porch chicken chat. Yes. Uh, if you have not subscribed, we'd love for you to consider doing that. If you have, thank you so much. Welcome back. Welcome to the family, as yep. we like to say. Uh, we do appreciate you. If you find this video interesting, we would love for you to share it with your friends on social media and to comment. We love hearing your feedback, so please do that in yeah. the comments below. Yes, we're going to go enjoy the rest of this rainy day. Yes. So hope you guys have a great week and be blessed.